Welcome back to the channel guys, Kara Gray here at the Junalup Resort. Now, a bit of a different video here today. Today I'm gonna to show you a live in-person lesson with one of my students, David Gapes. He's got a YouTube channel called 4 to 4, in which he is documenting his journey on his way to a four handicap. Great guy and great channel to go and watch, so make sure you head over there and subscribe to him. But in this video, I'm gonna show you all the drills and exercises that we get him working on to improve the quality of his ball striking. Now, David's a long-term student and we've been working together for quite a while so this is not an initial first lesson a lot more has gone into our interaction before this session here this is simply just a monthly checkup in association with some supervised practice sessions to make sure he's staying on top of his game but this one's a little bit different from the content that i put out before so i hope you enjoy it. if you got any questions whatsoever make sure you let me know if you do wish to work with me remotely i am doing a lot of online coaching at the moment so you can simply just shoot me through a dm and we can get started to help you achieve your goals in the year ahead let's get into it Alrighty, so let's have a look up on the TV. Okay, so we can see the lead arm over here on the left hand side. It's getting a little bit better, still internally rotated just a little bit. So we'd want it just a whisker more up towards the sky. But really, I suppose if we're looking at setup position, golf ball underneath the left ear. So your upper body is actually slightly tilted too far forward in that position. So your upper body, like the, your center, let's say your upper center here, which is the center of your sternum, is a little bit too in front of okay. your lower body. So you're actually reversing your spine towards the target, which can cause you to get too much of a steep descending blow. Okay. So ideally what we would look at, like over here on the left-hand side, let's say we draw that line up, ball position's fine, is we'd like to see your left ear on that line. So as you would then set up to the golf ball, you would have a slight amount of tilt to your right side. So this right shoulder would get closer to this right hip here, and then that would add that tilt from there. So effectively, yeah, what happens, increasing to like the thuddiness of what it feels yeah. like, as you then swing to the top from the address position, and you get to here, you can see you actually kind of reverse into the target. Right, so ideally we would kind of keep a stable head. So not only was your head slightly too far, too far forward at address, but then it actually went even further forward. Now, this can help get your low point in front, help with the contact here or getting the bottom of the swing there. So it kind of has an arc that looks like that as such, but effectively it's just going to be too steep. So we want more of like a gradual landing rather than that real steep incline as you come in. Okay, so you can see that club shaft or the club head there is working down the trail arm better, which I like. Just a little bit too narrow here still. So for us, we just need to keep training that trail arm just to stay a little bit wider. So ideally by that stage, if I could kind of position your body differently, just so we're not dragging into the ground as much, your head would be here, right? So you'd be back a little bit. You'd be pushing forward with your lower body a little bit more so the left knee would be out a little bit more rather than kind of in and then this trail arm would be slightly longer so then you'd have more width here yeah. so therefore as the golf club's coming in you can see how quickly or how close that handle is to your body but then we lose it very quickly we don't really get enough shaft lean you kind of hold on through so effectively what we're going to be doing is setup wise you're gonna hips a little bit more forward, upper body just a whisker further back. So we're getting that nice stock position of that ball about one club inside the lead foot. Um, just get the stance slightly wider as well. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, let's keep working on getting this trail or this lead elbow out and feeling like we're pushing away. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna do a lot of swings to the top over here on the right hand side. And we're just gonna stop and then we're gonna try and push that to decrease the angle as much as we can. So this just gets wider. And what's gonna happen is we want that to max out at like 90 degrees and you can see it's kind of bending more. And that'll actually push your hands further up 
but it will add more width and make it easy to get the club back in front of you on the way down. Okay? Cool. Okay, that's good. So we're gonna get this out and then on top, perfect. Relax, there you go. Okay, stance a little bit wider. And then, your reference would be, if you're standing in front of a mirror, we want to see this ear pretty much directly over the golf ball there, right? So you probably feel a little bit tilted behind. Okay, great. So swing to the top and stop. Perfect. Push this trail hand away. So you can see that there's almost a gap between here and here. And we want this constant pressure of that palm against that thumb, widening that out as much as you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so set up again. Okay, so swing to the top. Good. Widen it out. Great. Cool face would be good. Okay, perfect. Let's do it again. So set up. It's good. Swing to the top. Good. It should feel wide. Swing through. So do it again. Yep, and through. So you feel like you had a lot more room to get the club? Yeah. yeah. So if I, if you just stand over yeah. there for me. So if the upper body's leaning this way too much and my lead arm is too internally rotated like that, it's gonna encourage my trail arm to fold too quickly behind my body, which then narrows the distance between the hands and the trail shoulder. As I then get to the top, for you it generally twists the face shut and this angle here, which should be 90 degrees, tends to overbend, so we get very narrow. And as we start down, right, the club effectively in space is too high and too far behind, and we get stuck, because this trail arm hasn't unloaded enough in front of the body, and as you can see, that starts to get shaft lean. Now, you could train that to try and get it wider in the downswing, but effectively in space, your club face would be still too sharp. So what we're doing through our setup, hips a little bit forward, a little bit of right side bend here, so we're getting tilted on top. Left ear over the ball is our stock reference. Then as we swing back, we've got our lead arm facing out. We're feeling like we've got constant pressure of the pad of our trail hand on that left thumb all the way to the top. Now, you can see I'm exaggerating this, but this is quite a wide angle, which would be very different to your angle here. So you're gonna have to feel that it's a lot more upper body turn to the top, which is very common, rather than players who generally pull and yank it around. Now, as we've talked about, it all originated from this here, getting like that and then sucking it behind. So once we get that out, we've got our structural solid grip. We're feeling like the trail arms wider, pushing away. Then as you come down, you're gonna have way more room for the club to actually come underneath and then head out towards the target, okay? So let's do stop start drills. So we're gonna go address, Swing to the top, stop, see if you can push it out. And then from there, swing through just softly, just to like a hundred meters and here's some shots. Okay, okay that's good. Love that. Okay, swing back and stop. Good, relax, perfect, slowly through, great, and again. Now, when you go slowly through, what I want you to feel is that lead knee is pushing out and over the toes of the left foot rather than down and to the left, okay? So we're gonna to swing to the top, we're gonna to stop, we're gonna push away and then push the left knee over the left toes and that'll get your body moving in more of a direction of the target rather than down and left, great. So do a couple of practice things. Okay, stop, wide, and push, and go. Great, so you see it felt like it was kind of like sweeping and then coming up, and that, that would be like in the golf swing, you're gonna get the maximum amount of power from leveraging the ground. So the more you push into the ground, the ground pushes back, that allows that big extension. So if you look at any of the top ball strikers, and especially the ones that create a lot of power, they'll have a look from the address position, they swing to the top, they have a level of extension to their body, they will then push down into the ground, when you think about Rory, and then the harder they push down, the ground pushes back and allows their body to extend, and that's how they get the speed. There's a transfer of energy into the ball. Okay, more practice swings. 
Okay, setup looks good. Swing back and stop. Stop. Wider. And go. Perfect. Great. Let's do it with the ball. Now, the most important thing when you're doing drills like this is to do the movements, right? And forget about the actual outcome of hitting the ball. Because if you do the movement well, the ball's going to be collected. But if you make the ball the focus, you'll start to store your rotation, you'll start focusing on the hit, and then you'll lose the sensation that you've got on. Okay, swing to the top and stop. And stop. Okay, push away, exhale, breathe, relax. Okay, push and go. Better. Notice there was a little bit more mat on that one though. You want to kind of get that nice brushing feeling rather than the big driving down into the ground. And again. That's good, setup looks good. Great, swing to the top and stop. Okay, love that, and go. Perfect, nailed that one. That would have felt good, huh? Great. <laughs> All right, so let's keep doing that. I'll film that for you. Okay, so we'll do like two comparison videos here. We'll do one from face on and one from down line, just of the drill. We'll record them, we'll put them into your coach now, because then you can see them from both perspectives, okay? So here we've got the review before on the left, after on the right. The right's just doing the drill swing. So a couple of things, like if we get to the top and we stop, let's go lead arm parallel first, right? And we'll do the same thing here. Get those hands so they're pretty much matched up. Now what you'll see over here on the left hand side relative to the right is an over flexing of this trail arm back and behind your body, okay? Now when that do, does that, you essentially lose the width or distance between the trail shoulder and the hands. So that gets what we call narrow. So it's kind of like a fake lag look. But that just gets the angle of the club coming in too steep into the ball rather than using the lag efficiently, which would be the bend of the trail wrist up against the trail forearm and having width, so the distance between the trail hand and the shoulder, okay? So what happens is your arms then continue to fold we then max out this angle. So this is far more than what we would like, which would be 90 degrees. And it kind of gets that look that your swing's a little bit long and the lead arm's pinned across your chest. Then as you come down, versus what we see over here on the right, so by the same stage, what's gonna happen is we're pushing. A Couple of things that we'll notice, this trail elbow, if we zoom in nice and close here, and this is significantly improved from what it used to be. If this is like the seam line of your shirt, and then that's the seam line of your shirt. Your trail elbow, you can see it's slightly further in front of that red line by that stage, okay? Now, the effect that this has, as we then continue that on into the downswing, is if you look at your right arm and the unloading of it over here on the left-hand side, it's like really bent and then straightens out through the golf ball. Whereas over here on the right, it's not releasing as much. And then as you turn through the shot and exit, we get more of that sweep rather than that kind of thuddy down into the ground. So from the face on, we'll be able to see the differences in how the body's moving. But really this angle here is literally just to get the trail arm width at the top. So this is your drill. You're gonna swing halfway back and stop, push away with the right palm so it feels like it's wide. And then from there, you start your downswing in the drill swing by pushing the left knee over the left toes. And then that'll start getting that sort of width staying constant as you swing through. So this is the before and after of your very first swing on the left-hand side here today, and then the drill swing over here on the right. So as you can see, just visually a much stronger position to be in, okay? Let's talk about some of the nuances with the setup. Uh, ball position tends to get just slightly a little bit too far forward over here on the left-hand side. And when that also happens, right, is we get your upper body so it's tilted too far in this direction. Over here on the right-hand side, ball position slightly further back, and you can see that your left ear is positioned pretty much directly on top. And that's the look that we would be looking for, okay? So if we see over here on the left versus the right, we'll make them the same color. Pretty much nailed that setup over the right hand side there with the left ear over the ball. Uh, the ball is located one club head inside the lead foot rather than too close to the front foot, which we like to see. Uh, stance is a little bit wider and for your size, that's what we need, right? Um, if we zoom in on the lead arm, the lead arm over here on the left hand side, two internally rotated like this, and you can see how that creates a bunching through the top left sort of armpit there, right? Over here on the right hand side, it's a little bit more relaxed through that upper body, and part of that is because the elbow crease is facing more up towards the sky. 
Now, the reason this is important, it's gonna help us create or maintain width in the backswing. So as we swing back and we get to, let's say this stage of the backswing here on the left-hand side versus over here on the right. Now, what you'll see from these two images is the distance between the club shaft and the shoulder is far greater on the right-hand side than the left-hand side. So effectively, you're pivoting a lot more powerfully with your body on the right-hand side, and you're maintaining the width. You've still got the hinge, which is great, which is what we're looking for, but the distance between the trail hand and the trail shoulder is a lot further, and then that's what we would see with the professional. As you then continue to the top, that continues to get narrow, so this is, gets really short. Whereas over here on the right-hand side, yeah, we're doing a drill, but effectively we want to kind of match up what your arms and your body are doing. So we're not getting collapsed at the top. And if you just look at those two images, it's so much stronger on the right. So then as you start down, verse over here on the right-hand side, you've got the little pump move of that trail hand moving away. And then you start to make your transition down. The frame that we see over here on the right-hand side is a common misconception that you want to get this angle as close to the shoulder as possible, thinking that's lag. That's just getting the right arm driving into your body, right? So you've got a better production of lag over there on the, on the right-hand side because it's actually wider with the trail arm, but you're keeping that trail wrist bent back. So therefore, that displays itself as we come into the ball, right? A lot wider and stronger coming in here. You can see the right arm is beginning to straighten up and your impact position over here on the right-hand side well, you see that the hands are actually starting to move further in front. So the purpose of lag would be to get shaft lean, but you're getting more of that shaft lean on the right-hand side than you are on the left, okay? So effectively, on the left-hand side, you're trying to create it too early and drag it in front. On the right-hand side, you're keeping it wide and then keeping it wide on the way through, which is just gonna result in a more predictable delivery. As your body comes through, we can still get you a little bit more up through it, but you can see all things being equal as well due to the setup pieces over here on the left-hand side Versus the right hand side, you can see your body extending up with the belt buckle, the lead legs a little bit straighter by that stage. It just looks a lot more powerful, like you're not kind of twisting around on the same spot, All right? So the little drill swing, we're gonna set up into our strong setup position that we have over here on the right hand side. Uh, ball underneath the left ear, we've got our left elbow crease out. We're gonna swing halfway back, we're gonna stop. We're gonna apply pressure of that right palm against that left thumb there, away from our body, so we create this nice wide structure. And then from there, we're gonna powerfully swing down, starting that downswing move by a shift of pressure with our left knee over our left toes out towards the target, finishing to a complete finish. So when we put it all together, it looks like this on the right-hand side. Beautiful, nailed it. Awesome. Okay, let's groove it. Okay, stop, push, and go. Like that? Push and go. You can measure this just in front of a mirror. Mm -hmm. So you can see how that's kind of a bit behind. So I would shift a little bit more pressure here, there. That looks great. All right, off you go. Swing to the top and stop. Push and go. Hips up more. Yep. Setup is perfect. Okay, stop, push and go. Very close. So the transition move there, the backswing was really good. Um, mm -hmm. Just stand over there and grab the club off you. So when you're going through this piece here, from the address position, as you swing back, let's say that your arm had collapsed, as you press, keep it there, and then start the move down by feeling that left knee go outside. So you can see how it's gonna shift my body like this. As I do that, the arms will naturally start to unload underneath my body. So that last one, you went good, kind of pushed away and then swung down quick with your wrists and your hands. So then you ended up faking that lag again. So if we're doing a good rep of it, it would look like this. Finishing to a complete finish, yeah.
Good, stop. Okay, push, relax, great, and go. Better. Love that.